If you're new around here, my name is Tom. I'm a professional working photographer and videographer, and this is my review of the iPhone 14 Pro camera. So I've been using this iPhone camera pretty much every single day since using and buying the iPhone 14 Pro, which I kind of guess is around about two months of usage now at this point. I absolutely love the phone. I absolutely love the cameras. And one thing that continually brings me pleasure every single time I go out and shoot using the camera as my main camera, which the best camera is the one you have on you, and that is the lenses. Or more specifically, the consistency of quality that the iPhone lenses has. So what I mean by that is that the iPhone in general and the iPhone 14 isn't the first iPhone to do this, but as I say, it's the best that Apple has actually released. But each of the camera on the back here, you've got the telephoto, you've got the wide, you've got the ultra wide lens here. I'm having to kind of block my face here so my camera doesn't pick, <laughs> pick up my face and focus on it. But you can see those lenses. Each of those lenses on the back of the iPhone feels like one cohesive camera system. Now, obviously this isn't quite true and there are small differences between the lenses that you're using, but it definitely does feel like you're using one system. I test a lot of smartphones here on the channel, as you guys know, and this isn't always the case, particularly a phone that stands out to me is the Samsung uh, Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now that phone had an amazing range of lenses and a actually a, a 10x telephoto, so like a 230 mil, but it really, really struggled in low light and it was definitely a subpar lens or a subpar focal length compared to the rest of the cameras on that phone. No such issue with the iPhone here. The iPhone feels cohesive. Every lens feels perfect and all feels like kind of you're getting the same quality regardless of which lens you actually shoot with. And I absolutely love that as a user. Having this collection of lenses on the back of your phone wherever you go is extremely liberating and genuinely does stop me having to wonder sometimes whether I should bring my bigger camera. Sometimes if I'm just going somewhere and I don't want to have to carry a camera around, I'm just kind of comfortable in the fact that I have my iPhone in my pocket. It has a beautiful telephoto on it, a really good mid-range kind of standard wide and obviously that ultra wide which is an impressive focal length in itself. An example of this recently is I actually just went on holiday to Marrakesh and this is one of the more exciting things I got up to on that trip was actually a hot air balloon trip. Side note if anyone has an opportunity to do this at some point in their life I like thoroughly thoroughly recommend it genuinely feels like kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity and because of that I actually did end up bringing my big camera with me. I brought my Canon EOS R6 um, and it had a 24 to a 105 f4 zoom lens. I do kind of feel like I walked away with probably some of the best photographs I've ever taken. Uh, I'll just show you these because uh, like I said, I was just like unbelievably happy with him. These ones here were taken uh, on the Canon R6. So it's, you know, a much more professional setup than a phone. But now I'm going to show you the iPhone shots. So the, here are a collection of iPhone shots taken on that trip. And you can just see like kind of how well the iPhone actually stands up, particularly I think the telephoto here, like I just love the fact that you can get shots like this using the camera that is inside your pocket. Like it's just, it kind of just blows my mind every single time. So obviously with those collection of lenses that I've already talked about, you can get like really nice zoomed in shots like this one of like close up on the balloons. Then you can go to that kind of standard normal wide, the kind of standard iPhone uh, focal length that we all know and love. And then obviously we can also go to that ultra wide and you can see a whole range of focal lengths and different types of shots that you can use just on your phone. I know I'm banging out about this, but I genuinely do love it. Another bonus, and I talk about this quite a lot, is again that camera system that I brought with me, the Canon R6 with a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. Uh, I wasn't actually able to shoot wide enough to capture the balloon itself. Using the ultra wide um, is like super, super cool that you have, I think it's a, an either an 11 mil or a 13 mil focal length on the iPhone. So I was able to shoot up and get some really, really creative angles. You just wouldn't be able to get unless you bought a dedicated ultra wide lens and obviously you know that will require a bag and a separate lens and in order to actually change that like it's not that easy to get an 11 to 13 millimeter shot so this iphone is obviously the first iphone to introduce a 48 megapixel camera on that main rear facing lens i do personally think a lot of this is just marketing spiel the vast majority of the time apple is simply kind of oversampling those 48 megapixel photos into a 12 megapixel shot now this is an oversimplification of the software that's actually going on in this phone. But I think overall, you're not going to see a dramatic, dramatic benefit if you compared photos from the iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone 14 Pro of that standard main rear facing camera. Might be a little bit better, but it is going to be marginal. There is one setting inside the camera app that actually allows you to shoot in full 48 megapixel photographs. To be honest, though, I don't actually think you should ever do this. A uh, 
48 megapixel raw photo ends up being literally like almost 90 megabytes and that is a quick far way to fill up your phone i would say just kind of definitely keep it on the standard 12 megapixel if you're wanting to shoot in raw i would say as a caveat obviously again this is the best rear facing camera that apple have ever made but i do just wonder whether that's due to the 48 megapixel count and also again it is going to be marginal over for instance the iphone 13. what i will say though is that one enormous benefit of that 48 megapixel camera is apple are doing some really clever software things to be able to enable a 2x focal length zoom on the iPhone. What this means is Apple use a one-to-one -one pixel readout of that 2x. So they say kind of taking the center of those pixels in that 48 megapixel camera and you're getting access to almost like a little bit of a fake 2x zoom but it is optically good and optically usable and it does genuinely feel like you've got a 0.5 a 1 a 2 and a 3 times zoom on this iphone and i use this a bunch and um, yeah, it gets really really impressed me and been really really useful anyone who's watched a lot of videos here on the channel know that my biggest complaint with smartphone cameras tends to be over sharpening and this is still true using the iPhone 14 Pro. Still shots coming out of that default camera app do tend to look over sharp and kind of just a bit clinical. And I think these kind of slightly strange auto enhanced feature that Apple does apply to your photos means that you do just end up getting a, you know, a slightly digitally processed looking image. I think these cameras have finally got to the point where the over sharpening is one of the biggest factors holding them back. I think that's why I notice it, particularly using these cameras. Like the lenses are so good. The software is so good that it then applies some sort of kind of over sharpening filter on top which i guess is what some people prefer in their images otherwise apple wouldn't do it but in my opinion everything else is so good now that that is a thing holding the cameras back luckily though there are solutions to this over sharpening issue on the iphone and one would be an app like varlens which is super fitting because they actually reached out and wanted to sponsor this video so varlens is a full manual control camera app for the iphone it brings dslr like features to you and your phone whilst acting as a far more superior camera app. Now, I'm not going to bang on too much about manual controls inside this app, uh, even though it does give you impressive controls like ISO, uh, shutter speed, actually even manual focus. The thing is, though, other apps do exist that do manual shooting controls. I think where Valens sets itself apart is a few really cool killer features. Most notably, and my personal favorite, is an AI-powered de-sharpening mode that you can shoot directly with through the app. It's super, super subtle and really, really powerful. It genuinely does fix the issue of over sharpening through shots on the iPhone. Take a look at this shot here on the left and then this shot here on the right. The shot here on the left was shot with this AI de-sharpening filter on and the exact same shot, same lighting situation, same everything. This was also shot through uh, Varlens but with the de-sharpening filter off and you can see the clear, clear difference. And like I say, this isn't like, it doesn't look fake, it doesn't look over-processed, it's done in a really subtle and beautiful way. Another benefit to shooting through Varlens is it does also remove the kind of, again, that kind of Apple auto-process image uh, so you won't get something kind of slightly funky looking what you see out of the viewfinder on your phone is kind of what you get Varlens comes with a whole host of other features uh, like a superior portrait mode algorithm that actually replicates f1.1 which is really cool you can load in your own custom 3d LUTs and that allows you to actually shoot with your own LUTs like pre-applied on your images like very very cool there's a whole host of other features if you'd like to check it out Varlens is available for free via the link in the description so moving on let's talk about where the magic happens and this for me is apple pro roll this is where we go from shots looking like a smartphone image like you'd expect from a phone to taking a significant step up and that's going to actually start moving into the area where it would replicate performance from a normal camera i'm going to walk through editing of some of these images so you can see almost like some before and afters and we'll do that on lightroom okay so we're here with one of the shots from marrakesh as you can see so there's a couple of ways that you can go about editing uh, this apple pro raw photograph first of all would obviously be to use a preset and i actually have a set of apple pro raw presets available uh, via the link in the description so we can see what these will do to them you can see that obviously not every preset will work on each photograph but you can see that i think for this one everyday pop looks like it will like looks actually really nice you can see the before and after there it's just kind of a subtle difference uh, but for me that looks great another way is obviously to edit for it from scratch so i think what we'll do here is we'll dim the highlights and we will also dim the shadows down here. So, I mean, we could play around the exposure value slightly, but this was a very much shot 
like at dusk um, uh, or dawn. <laughs> and um, we're going to play around with this temperature just ever so slightly. I'm going to slightly warm that up. We're going to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity and some vibrance to the image. And then something I do with every Apple Pro Raw photo is I'm going to reduce the amount of sharpening. So you can see if we put that back where it was, it's roughly about 40. You can see that that's how sharp the image is straight out of the camera. But the raw file does allow us to reduce that sharpening to zero, which is another way of dealing with it. And then we're going to add a little bit of noise reduction, which again will smooth out that image even further. Then we're just going to hit... Uh, apply just to see if whether there's a bit of correction uh, in terms of the image and then we can hit before and after you can see that that is a big substantial difference and looks significantly better video performance is a really strong benefit of the iphone this is kind of a slightly more photography centric review but i do just want to let you know that video is really really strong on the iphone uh, you can see kind of a whole host of sample images and sample videos that i've been getting uh, from various travels various trips that i've been doing android phones are definitely definitely catching up with the iPhone in terms of photography. I think really there are genuinely uh, competitors or other kind of big Android producers that are making phones that are just as good for photos. Um, but I do think Apple consistently performs well in the video space and it, it is a key kind of differentiator. For instance, like the Google Pixel, the video is significantly worse um, than on the iPhone, in my opinion. Don't hate the messenger, that is just kind of what I think. If you do shoot a lot of video, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the iPhone 14 Pro. What I would say though is that cinematic video is still like trash. I kind of hate it. I never use it. I think that it always ends up with kind of weird artifacts, things that aren't in focus or shouldn't be. Um, I, I think it's good as a feature to be able to have it in your phone just in case you need it. But please don't be shooting professional video using cinematic mode. Um, I think just buy a camera. In terms of battery life, this is another area that's kind of really important to usage uh, in terms of camera performance. You obviously don't want your phone to be running out of battery when you are shooting photos or taking videos or obviously in general throughout the day. Uh, the battery life in my experience has been really good on the iPhone 14 Pro. Definitely not absolutely crazy. And I've heard the iPhone 14 Pro Max is pretty significantly better, but the iPhone 14 Pro easily lasts me a full day, even with significant camera usage. And that is where we come to my main complaint with the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, this is an issue that has been present for so many iPhone generations, it just blows my mind that they have not fixed this. And this, of course, is lens flaring or image ghosting. For some reason, something to do with the refraction through these camera lenses means that if you take photos of any artificial light, sometimes even the sun will do it. So basically that's inevitably any low light shot normally, unless you're kind of shooting without any artificial lights present in the frame, you will always get these image ghosts or like lens ghosts where you're getting this slightly strange lens flare and you'll see it all over social media where people are just taking photos at night and you always see one of these little spots on your image. I don't know how Apple hasn't fixed this. It's like a super weird thing that I would have thought is an easy fix. Surely they're getting complaints about this. Surely their quality control is saying, all right, maybe we can't have these image ghosts on every single photo that is taken in low light. Hopefully they deem it fit to actually fix this because it is a very weird, consistent problem and it's been there for a long time. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but I think if you shot a lot of low light photos, for instance, this would start to drive you crazy. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.